What the? <laughs> How does this track do this to me? Hey, what's up? My name is Alex. I'm a music producer, and today I want to listen to and dissect the music of Ace Combat Zero. This video was specially requested by the people over at Patreon. More information about that later on. So let's go with Zero. Actually, this is a song that I've listened to a lot of freaking times. So rather than this being a blind reaction, it's gonna be a music nerd telling you why it's a cool song. So let's go. It starts with this interesting marriage of these beautiful strings and this sound design on the left. I love it. Man, yeah, yeah, when I heard that the first time, I lost my freaking mind. So this track starts in a very bold way. The first thing you notice is the Ace Combat formula, and that's rather what I call it. So here's the Ace Combat formula I explained in 30 seconds. Say, for example, I wanted to write an Ace Combat track. The first thing I would do is write some modern sound design stuff like... And then I would pair it up with some orchestra that sounds dangerous and epic. The final result of such a marriage would be something like this. This sort of sound of modern sound design plus cool orchestration is what Ace Combat is all about. However, Zero takes this up a notch by adding one more element, which is Spanish guitars. I mean, what the hell? I say Spanish guitar because this style of playing is called flamenco. It's a style that originated, you know, in Spain and Latin cultures anyway. And the rhythm that the guitars are playing, check it out. It's like... Let's go one, two, three, one, two, three. That sort of rhythm has a name and it's called El Tresillo. Tresillo in Spanish means triplet. It's a very sensual, very sexy rhythm. In fact, it was used in pop music a lot. 8-Bit Music Theory also made a video about this. The Tresillo permeates throughout this whole track and gives it this driving Spanish sensual rhythm. And the way the guitars are playing is typical flamenco rumba style. So the flamenco rumba is one of the basic rhythms of flamenco. And when you play it slowly, it goes like this. You start by moving your thumbs on the guitar four times then you place your hand on the guitar body to emulate percussion and then you move your index three times the way to play it in flamenco style will be to do it much faster so let's try that whatever and <laughs> it goes something like that and when you speed it up a lot and you do it with good technique you get the ace combat riff or this sort of flamenco riff that is pretty much everywhere so from these very first few moments this track already exceeds what you heard for most of your life by introducing three elements that you would normally not hear together like how many tracks can you think about when you have modern sound design modern orchestration and at the same time you also have flamenco guitars like i don't know many like that and this is why ace combat music is insane it's because it's a forward-thinking sound Soundtrack. And in this case, it's written by Keiki Kobayashi, and the guitarist is Takanori Goto. Now, let's, let's move on with the track. Like, everything goes freaking together. Like, you have these string marcados, and this freaking percussion. So good. Yeah, that's amazing. And then this kicks in. Jesus. Yeah, this is. That is actually freaking insane. Listen to this. Ah! It's amazing. What I love so much about this passage, I have not played the game, but I've listened to the soundtrack and this seems to be uh, the main theme of the Debelkan War, this Ace Combat game, which is also heard in the epilogue. What I love so much about this passage is the execution and the way in which it's delivered. Like, you have this upheaval of rhythm percussion, but going crazy. But the way it ends is the coolest thing. You have this gong that opens up the, the scene so much, like this. And it kind of leads you into the next part. In the song, it feels like we're going through lots of clouds and when the gong kicks in, the sky clears up and now we can see clearly all around us. Just listen to it. You're going through the clouds and then the sky cleared up and you can see all the beauty 
that surrounds you as you fly through and soar through the sky. That's how it feels. And what I love so much is also like there's so much stuff going on here. I think the Spanish guitar is delineating probably the vibe of the place that we're into. I suppose the reason why they chose to go with the flamenco sound is to represent the land. The vocal is the main theme, I guess, of the heroes and stuff. What I love so much is underneath all that, you have a solemn trumpet, solemn sort of brass that goes together with the main vocal, which sounds heroic and patriotic. That does something like this. It's a beautiful chord here, beautiful hammer. That's so amazing. This is something I talked about in my reaction on Daredevil from Ace Combat 7, I think. This multi-layered aspect to the soundtrack permeates throughout the series and it tells so much like, and it's also you know it's very good orchestration from Keiki Kobayashi which by the way Keiki Kobayashi is the same guy who uh, wrote The Valkyrie in Final Fantasy 7 Remake so if you really like The Valkyrie in FF7 Remake I totally recommend you to check out the Ace Combat soundtracks because you know he's one of the main composers behind it and every track from him is just a, it's a masterpiece super cool you know it reminds me of uh, two of my favorite tracks Like, listen to this. Listen to this. Ah! Yeah, now, now it went full Spanish mode. Like, what the hell? We have, we have freaking castanets playing on the left and right. That reminds me, this part right here actually inspired me when I was writing my Final Fantasy VIII, the landing remix. There's a section where I hit the Latin guitar. And also I have some clapping and percussion that makes you feel like you're in the middle of a crowd. When you add the whole orchestration, you get this. So it gives you the vibe that even though this is a big orchestration, you're in the middle of a crowd, like clapping and chanting. You know, it's a sort of vibe that I got from Ace Combat because I freaking love Spanish guitar so much. I was saying this reminds me of two of my favorite tracks from Final Fantasy. One of them is the Dissidia the remix of the Final Fantasy 1 battle theme that at a certain point there's a Spanish guitar that kicks in for no reason and it absolutely steals the show. And my other favorite is the uh, Spanish guitar in the Black Mages version of Vamo a la Flamenco, which is one of the most incredible things I've ever heard in my life. If it wasn't clear, I'm kind of obsessed about the sound of a Spanish guitar because contrary from electric guitars who are loud and they're like, hey, look at me, I'm the best, right? Electric guitars are like extroverts. Spanish guitars instead are like introverts. For example, here's the sound of a Spanish guitar. Here's the sound of me and my friend Aram Zero jamming on his electric guitar. Big, bold, Chad energy. Extrovert. Spanish guitars are like introverts. If you bother to talk to them and notice them, they're gonna tell you things that are quite interesting. This guitar in Ace Combat is a perfect example of the ways in which you can express yourself with one of these Spanish guitars. Let's rebuild it, for example. One thing we will notice is that the guitarist is drumming on the guitar body. He's also strumming some chords. In between those chords, he's playing some muted strings. And then obviously he's laying that melodic solo, which I cannot play. That's the coolest thing ever. Like, Notice how fast it gets. That, that tresillo rhythm is getting more and more intense as this solo goes. Initially, the, the guitarist was like playing these more chill lines, leaving space in between. But then as the track gets forward, it gets more, you know, frantic with his playing and it wants to represent this sort of passion and intensity that keeps on growing. And the rhythm underneath keeps on getting more intense as well. So it's, I don't know, it feels alive. It feels like a live performance. And I feel like I'm there with them. It's so freaking hype. It's amazing what they created here. No, da, 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 the cracks and all that stuff. And there's no electronic sound, just humans. 
and they just hype you up like crazy, like ah, fuck. That what? Jesus. Are you are you are you freaking kidding me? That's amazing. No, 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 listen, 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 what the fuck, <laughs> what the, f how does this track do this to me every time I listen to it, that's insane, like, they hype you up with this build up of humans just like jamming like freaking crazy, and then the freaking choir kicks in, and it's so freaking glorious, but the thing I like so much is that, that human jam, like the rhythm and the castanets and the clapping and the guitars, it is still there. So it's like, that is the core of what we're experiencing. But now around all of that, we have this insane choir. This choir sounds epic and it's also freaking smart because it's written in a way that is metaphoric and also very practical for the orchestration. Like it goes like this. You have the male vocal kick in, you know, starts very low and then the female vocals get at it. See? and see how it goes up and up and up and keeps going up and up and up when you're like no, no, it's like you slowly took off and now you're at the highest peak and what happens now is super cool the female vocals take you down very gently with this And the cool thing is that if we remove those female vocals, we're gonna notice that underneath them, we have the same exact thing we heard before. So this. is the same as this. It just sounds different because Keiki Kobayashi changed key. So it's basically as if you saw a painting change colors slightly, but the image represented is always the same. So we're seeing the same thing, but with new eyes, new perspective. And that's the way in which musicians can get listeners to understand the track and vibe with it without getting lost. So it's like this evolution step by step takes you higher and higher to the skies, basically with the voices of humans just singing the epic tales of this airplane uh, fighters or whatever they are. I don't know. It's just amazing. Like, it's free. And I'm all along, like, to see your rhythm. Wow. And now, people go. Yeah, what the fuck? Ah. Listen to you. I love this descending line here. <laughs> what the fuck? Like, listen, listen, listen. Check this shit out. Check this shit out. There we go. What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> I love that. I love that so much. What the hell? Right. This is where the goosebumps intensify like crazy. And the reason for it is different this time. If we were to write that same passage on brass ensemble, we'd get something like this. That's the same chords that the choir is playing. It makes you feel like freaking Superman. So it's not only amazing because the choir and the singers are so good to go so high in an epic way, but also at their core, the notes that Keiki Kobayashi chose to use are freaking epic by default. It's like you're seeing an incredibly beautiful woman and she's wearing makeup, but even without the makeup, she's one of the most gorgeous women you've ever seen. That's the same thing I feel about this passage right here. And that's nice. When you see that, you're like, oh my God. And also I love that when the female choir holds that high note, the male choir starts to move doing this so if you listen to the choir now just notice what's happening you have the super cool chord progression you have the female choir going super high and also the male choir leading the counter melody so it's like and here it rises the highest like that ah. that's actually freaking crazy like like Hear the melody. Just. Mm. Okay. That's so fucking amazing. And underneath all of that, you still have obviously the Spanish guitar freaking slaying those 
flamenco solos just because it can. <laughs> I, I freaking love this track. It's so extra, but in a way that is amazingly beautiful. A special thanks to Bowick for requesting this track over at the Patreon request thread. By the way, there's a new request thread coming out today. So if you want me to analyze any piece of music from any video game you like, feel free to write your own request in that thread. That's available if you support the channel over at Patreon as a way to thank you guys for making these videos possible as they take a lot of time to make. I hope you enjoyed this piece of music and this dissection. In my opinion, this is one of the best video game tracks ever made, if it wasn't clear from my reaction. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next videos. Bye.